Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Joseph. This is the follow-up tutorial on the NPC chat system and this is the text box side of it. So in the end I didn't end up needing to slow down the text. I liked it the other way and I'll show you guys what I've done here. Um, but before I get into it I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. You guys are all awesome. You have no clue how amazing you guys are. Let's get into it. So if I run the program I'm going to show you guys what I've done first of all. So again you can see it's the same NPC setup I had in the last video. When I click on it this time though, I actually get a chat box, which the formatting on this was the biggest nightmare to achieve. Um, I've got an NPC portrait, he's saying stuff to me. If I go, can you help me? He gives me a response. Um, he gets confused when I say no prob back to him. Um, he tells me good luck, stuff like that. And obviously if I go hello, he tells me a bit more about the quest line and stuff like that, and I can exit. And you can see, for example, I can exit at any point in the chat. So, like so. Okay, the way I achieve this, so first things first, let's look at how the text is generated. So the text is pretty straightforward. All, it ha all that happens is it gets captured in an array, and then I just format it by hand. So, for example, in a line there, you can see... Oh, um, I actually need to drop it down a line. So each of my text boxes have four, oh sorry, five line entries I can use in my text dumps. I'd most likely not go any bigger than that because otherwise it's getting a bit lengthy in explanations um, and you might start losing players as a warning. Um, but as you can see here, each of these have tied into 0, 1, 2, or 3, 4, or 99. So each of these relate back into this NPC controller. So basically on the option I choose will then give a text response back to the player. So that's the first step. The other part to this is if I reload the program quickly, you're going to see when I talk to the NPC, his um, facial expressions change. So that again ties into the NPC controller. So basically each of these have an assigned sprite um, for the response. Oh, sorry. Yes, each of these have a response. Sorry, I got myself confused. Each of these have a response um, tied into the NPC controller. So based on your option, based on his visual expression. Okay, so I've not changed anything in the step event. That's still the same. The thing that has changed is in the draw event here. And this is a bit more in depth. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give you guys some more space here to see what's actually going on. So you'll see here, this is, um, this is mainly formatting code, meaning that it's just stuff I'm using to format the text box. So up here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of values um, that just effectively relate to the format of what I'm using. And this part here took me the longest to generate, but what it means is the system is completely dynamic. So if I change these values, the whole thing changes. So if I want to change my text box to only be, um, let's say, 600, which should make it smaller, it's going to make my text box smaller and drop everything lower down. So the system basically is um, dynamic, allowing you to change it on the fly if you wanted to NPC to NPC, stuff like that. So basically up here is a bunch of preset values that are just internalized in the script. Some of them, like the view, is just the array entry for the view. And the reason for this is the whole thing is calculated off viewpoint. So it means that as you change your rooms, it's always calculated from the same position. Which in theory should then stick it to anywhere in room. Which basically means you can change your view sizes and stuff like that, and this should dynamically adjust. This allows you to change the view, so you might not use view entry 0, you might use view entry 5 for example, in your game. You can just update that and it should pull the values through. The adjustments are the dynamic adjustments. The sprite is just the chat bubble sprite. So all that is, if I jump back here for a second, is just this here. It's just some sprites I've set to use, Ooh. as you can see. So nothing ultra fancy there. Um, so if we jump back here, you'll see I generate my background of the text box. This is just using a rectangle I'm drawing white. And basically, I am running a calculation to find my technically two points of reference, um, which is the upper right, 
sorry, upper left hand corner and bottom right hand corner to draw my rectangle, which is this code here. Um, the next one I'm using is I do the top left to, um, to right, which is effectively I stretch an image. So what that does is it draws and stretches um, out of my sprite images here. It draws and stretches these ones here, these sprites here, to fit the image I'm looking for. Um, so if I reload this, so that stretches the top side. This one's going to stretch the top right to bottom right. This one stretches the bottom right to bottom left. And the last one stretches the left bottom to um, left top. And you can see it just runs down each of the equations and basically works out the values into x1, y1, h1, y1, which is basically um, your x, y, height, and width which then gets plugged into this equi oh, into the sprite draw here and it draws the sprite for you. Again, it's dynamic, so you can just, should be able to plug and play. Um, you'll see that I've used some ABSs in here and the reason for that is when I run the script here, um, let's say I draw here, if I'm drawing from my position is up in the corner here, I need to work out my height and then for my length, for example, I need to take this adjustment and this adjustment and add them to work out my total length. That's what that's doing and that's why I need to use ABS. ABS just takes a value and ignores it that, it just turns it to a straight value, it gets rid of any negative values to it. So that allows me to adjust and play the way I need it to do it. Um, my last set is just working out my XY positions for all the um, draw sprites, which is just the four corners. The next part here that you're going to see is my portrait adjustment. This is just pulling up the sprite portrait and drawing it. But you'll notice in here I've got my um, PC controller. So that value is then dynamically being pulled as we make suggestions. My last thing here is my um, text system. Now I had played with the idea of dynamically designing this so it breaks apart your text and works out how many lines it needs. Sometimes the more complicated options aren't the better options. So I've gone against that and just gone with a dumber system. Makes life easier though. Um, and you can see each of these are controlled and plugged into the NPC controller. Now you'll see here I've got this weird Y1 equals Y1 plus 16. All that basically says is take 16 and add, uh, sorry, take Y and whatever Y is is equal to Y plus another 16 on top. So this just lets it dynamically generate each of the step down so I don't have to go and recalculate every time. It's just being lazy. So that's basically the system in a nutshell. So it's pretty straightforward. I had to break it down because you can see between this part and this part, it would have been like a 30 minute video. I don't want to be putting out 30 minute videos for you guys. I want to try to keep these a bit more short and sharp to make things a bit easier for you. This information will be up on the Google Drive so you'll be able to download it. Um, let me know how you guys go and yeah, thank you for the suggestions really it makes a big difference when I can't think of content to make and you guys suggest stuff it makes a huge impact to what I can do So I want to say a great thank you to all of you and I will talk to you next time. See us